Talking Score 2796 here and today we're back at it with Let's Play Hogwarts Legacy Episode 7. So we did say it was going to be a daily upload but then we had some technical issues which I believe and I hope we have managed to sort out. It's taken a while for us to actually sort of get to the bottom of it but I believe it's... Well, I've got two two issues with it, I believe either it's a faulty HDMI splitter or a faulty HDMI cable. So we we'll swap both of them out and we're gonna see how we get on. What on earth just happened? I've never been accosted in such a manner. Then so close to Hogwarts. Let's talk to the stranger. Are you alright? I am, thanks in no small part to your excellent defensive skills. Care to tell me why two Ashwinders were ready to dispatch me to get to you? Ashwinders? Victor Rookwood's thieves and extortionists, his little cronies. They seemed quite keen on you. It's a long story, but thank you for your help. Hmm. Well, you've avoided them for the moment. Priya warned me things were getting dangerous. Best get moving on my research before they return. Who is Priya? You mentioned someone named Priya. Yes, my wife. She's the one who piqued my interest in Merlin. Gave me a book when we were students at Hogwarts. Typical hard-working Hufflepuff. Brilliant potioner. Has her own shop in Nocturne Alley. She's a travelling vendor. Here's what's going on in the Highlands before I do. Research You're a researcher. Oh, Nora Treadwell at your service. Historian and archaeologist specializing in Merlin's work and life. How extraordinary. Merlin? Of the legend of King Arthur? The very same. Merlin attended Hogwarts, you know. And I'm studying some curious fixtures he left here centuries ago. Fixtures? These vine-covered pillars, dozens of them, all around the area. I've taken to calling them the Trials of Merlin. I believe he created them as a diversion for his fellow Slytherins. <laughs> he was terribly fond of puzzles and enigmas. How fascinating. I can see why you're so interested in Merlin. I'd be keen to know more about the Trials. Well then, I'll let you in on a little secret. No one has yet managed to figure out how they work. But I believe I have just unlocked a crucial clue. I suspect that Mallow Sweet is an important component in getting the trials to work. Mallow Sweet? Versatile herb. Merlin repeatedly mentioned it in his writings. I had just arrived to test my theory when I was so rudely interrupted. You see, each swirl in Merlin's writing has its symbol in the center. That started me thinking, what if the Mallow Suite is meant to be placed at the center of the symbols? Precisely. Would you care to do the honors? We can see what comes of our little hypothesis. Right. I brought a trunk chock full of Mallow Suite with me. It's just over there by my tent. So I guess it's this one here, so let's have a quick look and get some This out. trunk? Yes, take plenty, even if you already have some. I have the Mallow Suite. Lovely. Now, notice the vines on these pillars here, as well as a stone swell on the ground. Each trial has these features. Place the Mallow Suite on the swell, and we'll see what happens. Revelio. Oh, this one here. My word! Did you see that? The vines disappeared! What should I do now? Incendio! This is uncharted territory. I am curious. Merlin's beard! The flames make the pyre sink. Merlin himself would be proud. Man, how beautiful! Well, what a day! I can hardly believe it. 
beats a Nora Treadwell. I take it we can call that a success? We can indeed. However, I now have even more questions. How does it work? I must review my notes. I may have missed something. Are all of the trials like this one? Hmm? Oh, not precisely. Well, I think each has those telltale vines and the swirl on the ground. You should feel free to solve them as you come across them. I believe I have what I need to continue my research. My guess is that each will also require mallow suit, which you can find in Hogsmeade should you need more. I really must be off. Such a pleasure to meet you. All right, so and do be careful out here. Now I've got what I needed. I shall return to the safety of my notes and books. Yes. Button for me, bars and more. Oh, there we are. Different challenges offer different awards. She's gone. So let's see what this student here needs help with. Might I beseech you for some assistance? How can I help? Hello, can I help you? Oh, thank goodness. Yes. My name is Grace Pinch Smedley. Of the Bath, Pinch Smedleys? I was hoping someone would come along soon. I was about to defy my father's wishes and would never have forgiven myself. You see, I need to retrieve something from the bottom of the lake. Might you be the one to help me? Uh, that's the lake doesn't sound... An underwater adventure sounds like... Diving into the like. lake sounds like an adventure. Tell me more. Splendid! Precisely the response I'd hoped for. What do you need help retrieving? Years ago, my grandfather, who fancied himself quite the astronomer, set sail from Hogsmeade Station for what was meant to be a quick stargazing cruise with my grandmother. They never returned. I'm so sorry. What happened to them? We can't be sure. We only know that neither they nor their boat made it back to shore. They were presumed drowned. Father was so distraught that he forbade our family from setting foot on or in the Black Lake ever again. A treasured family astrolabe vanished with them that night. If you could dive down and retrieve it, I may be able to bring my father some peace. Uh, what, is an what exactly is an astrolabe? It's an astonishing ancient navigational tool. Essentially, a handheld model of the universe. It's mainly used for studying the stars, astronomical pursuits, but it has nearly a thousand uses. Fascinating device. Sadly, I'd imagine it's rusted beyond repair now. Still, we'd love to have it returned to us. It would be like getting a bit of my grandparents back. And then should I know who your family is? You seem to think I might have heard of the Bath Pinch Smedleys. Why would I know your family? That's like asking why the sky is blue or grass is green. The Pinch Smedley name is synonymous with intellectual curiosity. We are known for our contributions to science and art. I'm surprised you haven't heard of us, frankly. But with all I plan to discover about the world around us, those that don't yet know the name certainly one day will. I'll, th I'll have to think about this. Mm. It sounds dangerous, especially for something of mere sentimental value. I understand. But I'd be forever grateful. Of course, you may discover much more than the astrolabe. Anything else you found would be all yours. I've cross-referenced the vessel's last alleged location against the lake's topography, depth charts, and tide schedule. My best guess is that it's just over there, about a furlong from the dock. It would be wonderful to have my grandfather's astrolabe back. So, I do hope you find uh, the astrolabe. It would mean so much to our family. It sounds as if her astrolabe is just northeast of the dock. I should dive down and see. Dive. Right. So it should be just 
This must be where the Pinch Smedley family astrolabe is. Search. So, protection spectacles. Oh, so there's like little things to search. So, gold dragon eye spectacle. Oh, uh, dragon eyed spectacles. We've created quite a few bits from this, I think. Of course, it's only last one with the Oh, Peach Medley from the Astro with the World Potion. I should let Grace know that I found her family astrolabe. And then, what have we got there? Forest Ivy Scarf. At least we found the quest item. I should love to see where to go. Just go some miles, isn't it? Find the dive too terribly difficult. Hello, Grace. I followed your bearings on a dive in the Black Lake. Oh, how incredible! Did you find the astrolabe? I did, I'm here. I did. I hope it makes your father happy. It will. I can't wait to see his face. Thank you so much for doing this for me, and for my family. You do well to keep an eye out for more spots to dive. A diver of your caliber is certain to find all sorts of things down there. Thank you again, and I do hope you keep diving. You certainly have a knack for finding treasure. So, oh, what a mermaid. Complete side of relationship quests. I'm hoping you can... Incendio. Incendio. Yeah, it's 
This looks intriguing. Though. Let's see what's in the dungeon. Oh. So, red or golden silk robes. Oh, okay. So, what's our actual. Right, so what's the quests? Herbology class and Professor Hedwig's sons. Um, let's just see what that is. The friend does this dark arts class during the day. So we'll probably be able to just sort of go to Hogwarts and Sarts, defense against the dark arts. So, yeah, it's Charles defense against the dark arts classroom. Off on another adventure, are we? To I hope you were able to take care of everything I had asked you to do. I believe so. Professor, I completed all of your most recent assignments. Well done. Then you're ready to learn Expelliarmus. Pay close attention. The disarming charm may often be all you need to defeat the most powerful dark witches and wizards you might encounter. So Spellcasting really requires a focused mind and a steady wand. Good work. The dummy is here if you wish to practice. So, where's the Expelliarmus? We'll go with the Science of the Bottom. Expelliarmus, you seem to have the right end of the stick, but keep practicing. Expelliarmus, you will save your life. Let me open. It's for the office. Still active. Right. Half what's ground, so we don't actually need to. Let's try and remove that. Uh, how do you zoom in? Uh, exit. Okay. So, what's the next class? Herbology class. Required level three, that's fine. Let's go to the biology class then. If only 
a new student were to help me with my stud. Let's go to herbology class and learn some potion making. That's what I like to do. Learn some potion making. There's a cell, so you're down. Greenhouse is too clean discovered. Is she growing pungus onion again? Good morning, Professor Garlic. How wonderful it is to see you again, Lenora dear. Oh, here. You'll need these for today's class. Uh, um, uh, a little treat for your auntie. Oh, hello. Class, please welcome the newest rose in our garden. We do look forward to growing together. How thrilling it is to have everyone back together again. This year will be filled with enchantment and excitement, but the most important thing cultivated in herbology is knowledge. The prudent herbologist is no more afraid of the venomous tentacular than the bouncing bone. Now then, today we will be acquainting ourselves with the mellifluous tuber known as the mandrake root. Oh, that's <laughs> Let's see if we can't make our fibrous friends a bit more comfortable, shall we? <laughs> First, let's protect our ears. <laughs> now, everyone, grip their mandrake by the tendrils and give it a firm tug. Uh, poor mandrake. should envelop the root like a warm, dirty blanket, putting the mandrake right at ease. Repero! I'm very sorry about that. Yours was a bit mature, I'm afraid. All right then, off you go. Splendid work, everyone. So we will now, for here, our yeah. next task, we'll be planting dittany at our potting tables. You can all get started. Hmm. I wonder if hippogriffs like knot grass. Hello, garlic. Yes, Hello, Professor. Garlic. Firstly, well done with your mandrake. They can be rather difficult to get a grasp of. I enjoyed it. Actually, I enjoyed it. I couldn't help but catch your enthusiasm. How kind of you. It seems you're already taking to herbology like a mandrake to fresh soil. Now, as I mentioned, next we'll be planting dittany. Let us find you some seeds. I already have some, Professor. Pick them up in Hogsmeade. You've visited the Magic Neep. Wonderful! A prepared student is bound to bloom. I've arranged for you to have your own potting table here in the classroom. Wasn't easy to spare one on such late notice. Plant the seeds there now, and you can return to harvest them later. Even with soil, sunlight, and a bit of magic, they will take time to grow. Right, Let's so... see how to balance my star thistle arrangement. So, Mithla's fancy, uh, or rose Disney's restorative properties make it a vital bottle. ingredient in the Wiganweld potion, as you okay, all should so know from Professor Sharp's class. Ten uh, the rocker is letting the veil seeds be implanted. Yes, that's ten minutes in real time. Well done! Once it can be harvested, your dittany will be ready to use in Wiganweld potion. I'll let Professor Sharp tell you about that. Now, what say we branch out? Introduce you to a different sort of flora, the Chinese chomping cabbage. You'll find that some plants are better suited to uses outside of a cauldron. 
The cabbages do get testy without something to chew. Fortunately, I have a dummy for them to gnaw on. Dear, dear, and let them have a good chomping. Yes, Professor. They're in the other greenhouse. It's just at the end of the footbridge leading out of this room. Your classmate, Mr. Pruitt, has kindly offered to accompany you. Come back and see me when you're finished. Oh, and mind your fingers. They do bite. So... Where are we going? Hello. Oh. Saw you on your way to Hogsmeade the other day. Nice to meet you. I'm Leander. I'll be showing you the Chinese chomping cabbages. Up these stairs will take us there. But, your lead. Well, let's go then. Nice work in defence against the dark arts, by the way. Excuse me? Your duel with Sebastian. And he's good. <laughs> Thinks he's really good. But you outright sloth. Here we are. Home of the Chinese chomping cabbage. Go on. Grab a few of those cabbages. Just... Now, see that dummy? Just toss the cabbages at it. And they'll do the rest. Uh, attacks. Hold L1 and tap R to open. Okay, so we've got like a little wheel. Slide on the Chinese boat. No, uh... Look at there that. Well, Chomperman. But mouth's on. <laughs> Mum planted some in her garden last year to keep the gnomes out. Did save her the denoming, but they left her honking daffodils in tatters. Yeah, Vicious little wild. bastards, aren't they? My kind of plants. Not like stupid booba tubers and bouncing bulbs. The kind of plants that just have your back in a fight. Uh, not saying you can't go it alone, but, well, imagine that wasn't a dummy. Sure, but that, I was imagining it already. Trust time. me, Leander. I was imagining it the entire time. You were? I mean, of course, you're uh, not someone to be trifled with. I see that. Dogweed and Deathcap has more of them, if you're keen. Other plants too. Ones your parents wouldn't plant in the garden. You get the idea. Anyway, we uh, probably ought to head back to class. So Take your time. I'll see you back in class. Ooh, so yeah, it was... Alright, that's fair enough. So let's go back to class then. This way. No. <laughs> That's the way. 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 That's the and for that helpful Seasick reminder as to why we should always wear our dragon hide gloves, I shall end our Six lesson months. here. Terribly sorry, Mr. Clopton. I tended to the Chinese chomping cabbages, Professor. Remarkable plants, aren't they? I hope they weren't too much trouble. Oh, don't see any bite marks or missing digits. And good, as you do seem to be quite green-fingered. Oh, I'm eager to see your skill in the soil continue to blossom. As are my plants offer so much. Magical plants have so much to offer. I'm eager to learn more. I'm glad. Herbology is a bounteous subject. Tend to your garden, and it will tend to you. Huh. Well, I suppose that's everything. Do come by for a chat sometime. I so enjoy checking in with my new students. Right, so that's herbology done. I hope those mandrakes are really relishing their new pots. So, Only cost me my damned hearing. How do we weld them up? Then we take it off that way. So quests. No store is available. Okay. New quests available. Yeah, potions class. The next class I must attend is potions is taught by Professor Shaw. Oh, and then we can probably just sort of Professor John's classroom, no. 
greenhouse, potions plus room. Not done the uh, not got the flu flame through yet. Right. Oh, up the stairs. So let's go to the potions classroom. My entire Maybe all of them, someone from the ministry guarding the school the after the incident. Professor Black would never allow that. It would make him look completely Must be incompetent. Yeah. Potions is one of the most challenging and hazardous subjects taught at this school. As fifth years, you will be required to reach new heights of both discipline and intellect. You will begin this term by brewing a Wigan Weld Potion. Mr. Takar, can you tell us why this particular potion might come in handy? Yes, Professor Sharp. The Wigan Weld Potion can be used to sterilize and even heal a variety of injuries. It can heal some injuries, but not all. Points for Ravenclaw. Before today's class is completed, each of you will have brewed a Wigan Weld potion of your own. You never know when you might need it. Please begin. So, how do we brew this potion then? Use a strong, even motion when crushing your ingredients. Please be meticulous when adding powder to your potions. One errant sneeze could be disastrous. I see most of you have not forgotten how to stir. Hmm. Not an easy potion to brew. Well done. And from what I hear of your recent exploits in Hogsmeade, you'd also do well to practice brewing the defensive Edurus potion. Professor Weasley had you acquire the recipe from Jay Pippins, correct? Yes, sir. Good. For the moment, you can find the ingredients you need in my office. But in the future, you'll be expected to provide your own ingredients. Some can be harvested from the plants you grow in your herbology class, and rarer ones can be purchased. Others, however, may be harder to obtain, and will require you to be a bit more... resourceful. Come and see me when you've finished brewing, and we'll see if it was skill or luck the first time round. Right. So collect Ashwind the eggs. Uh, My parents considered keeping me home from school this year. Did I hear Professor Sharp say that you have permission to go into his office? He did say that. He wants me to get more ingredients to brew another potion. Brilliant! You, my friend, have been presented with an extraordinary opportunity. You remember me, don't you? Gareth Weasley. Ah, yes. We met in the common room. Listen, anyone with a troll-sized brain can brew an Adjurus potion. I'm working on something that's certain to be spectacular. I'm just missing one tiny last ingredient that will add that extra spark. I suspect that's where I come in. You're as clever as I'd hoped. I simply need a single fooper feather, as you'll already be in Sharp's office with his permission. Perhaps you could grab it for me. Oh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. I don't know, Gareth. I don't want to get on Sharp's bad side. You won't. Fooper feathers aren't that valuable. Sharp won't even miss it. I'm sorry, I have enough to worry about collecting the ingredients he wants me to get. I'm afraid I can't help you. I understand. I'll sort something else out. Right. Keep your books and mongrel And. Oh, what's that? Memory of the 31st December 1875 from. Aura of the subject 
Borgenham Birds. Borgenham Birds have had an increased amount of activity outside of the ordinary shop hours, particularly in the wee hours of the night, with suspicious deliveries being made to the shop's back entrance. Given that we know of the shop's reputation, we are adding more orders to join those that have already been watching the shop. You are among the newest additions. Further instructions to follow. Mm. Coins and ah, there we go. Wait, wait, we should collect the feather or not? Nah, we'll leave it. We'll be good. Or a bit of it now. Which always, as that always, has a few potions on hand. I'll look at that. Call it. <laughs> should you chop the didney or crush it? Potions Wrong answer could right. result in the unfortunate loss of your eyebrows. Well, let's go then. Okay. Brew potions from what must be like the potion station. Let's go up the So that would have been 20 seconds. And now we add the mallow sweet. And that's odd. What's happening? Wait, it's not supposed to. Ah! Get it! Get it! Oh! Oh! Dragon dog! What happened? <laughs> What now, Mr. Weasley? Sorry, Professor. That'll be points from Gryffindor, again. I don't even know where the Professor is. Turn to, oh, is it over there? Professor Shaw. I brewed an Edoras potion as you asked, Professor. Glad you managed to stay on task. Not every class is so eventful. I saw Mr. Weasley speaking with you earlier. He can be quite persuasive. Glad you managed to resist. You've done well today. I confess I was skeptical given the advanced nature of this class and the fact you're a new student. I'm glad I was able to meet your expectations. A rare occurrence. And you do well to remember that you're not a potions master quite yet. In addition to having a solid grasp of how to combine various ingredients, you should gain an understanding of the ingredients themselves. Pay particular attention in herbology. The plants you nurture there are often essential to the potions you brew here. Now, I recommend that you find a safe location in which to practice brewing. You cannot leave a hot cauldron simply anywhere. That'll be all. Right, so from the potions class as well. I think each of us has had enough excitement for one day. Class is dismissed. There we go, so complete main quests. Ugh. Oh. My roads are going to reap from Gareth's inspiration for so the rest of term. Quest, um, see what new quest see what new quest is. No stories for that one. <laughs> so we'll level eight, we've got some gear, what's some inventory store. Right, uh we've got any more safety quests, no signs, no stories, so what about that? Main Simon's relationships, side and completed the last ass room. Well, we have done a fair amount of the quest so far. Now, was it two pinches of energy? So Nicholas, our house ghost, is looking for you. You can find him near the Great Hall. Speaks nearly headless Nick. Handy resource indeed, your field guide. Right. I haven't slept in days. Hey, it's me, Gareth. Do you have a moment? Are you there? Yes, you. I wonder if you wanted to see me, sir. Yes, Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Porpington, at your service. Nice to meet you, Sir Nicholas. I know about the book you found and its missing pages. I may be able to help. Follow me, if you will. It's not too far. Wait. How do you know about the book and that it's missing pages? Word gets around amongst the ghosts. You were spotted with Mr. Sallow in the restricted section. 
Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. This may be a leap, but I believe I know who ended up with those pages. I'd be happy to take you to him, if you'd be so kind as to perform a small favor for me along the way. Hmm, a small favor in exchange for getting those pages. Yes, it's, it's nothing really. I'd be grateful if you could simply go into the kitchen and procure a little rotten roast beef. You can't imagine how inconvenient travel was before I invented flu powder. I beg your pardon. Roast beef. Rotten roast beef. That is correct. Rotten roast beef. If one floats through it just right, one can almost taste it. Mm. Jesus Ugh. Awesome. I suppose I can do that. But why me? It's simple, my young friend. My ghostly form cannot carry it. Revelio. Oh, Help the Hufflepuffs of original creations. This book holds a collection of Hogwarts students' favourite recipes over the centuries. Some dishes like pickled jiggle plums are likely an acquired taste. If you'd be so kind as to collect the roast beef, I shall explain everything else in due course. Revelio, oh, here we are. Tickle the pear and head on in. If one tickles pear in this sealed off fate of the bowl of fruit, it will giggle before turning to a doorknob to allow entry to Hogwarts kitchen. Did you say tickle the pear? Yes, in the painting. I'll wait right here. Uh, do try not to get in the way of the house elves. <laughs> Mm, I'm already imagining this sweet aroma of rotten roast beef. Our students never will on the kitchen. Students. What can they want? Delicious food and what found themselves a bit peckish, likely. Certainly you know makes rookies job easy. Well, so level one lot to chicken the. Uh, Find some beef. It smells glorious in here. You don't knock them over, just walk through and break them. So we've got some uh, coins again. Ugh, oh, there's a disgusting smell. I must be getting close. Oh, a student? What a treat! What can Finky get for you? A pumpkin pasty? Perhaps some Welsh rabbit? Sounds lovely, but what I really need is this rotten roast beef. Ah! Nick sent you, didn't he? Please help yourself. <laughs> Think he supposes Nick's tired of loitering about simply to experience the faintest memory of the taste of food. Do you conjure the food here? Do you and the other house elves conjure the food served in the Great Hall? Goodness, no. Not even house elves can conjure food out of thin air. Food is one of the five principal exceptions to Gantt's law of elemental transfiguration. We can, however, multiply it, transform it, and of course, prepare it. Then we send it straight up to the Great Hall. Are you, are there, are you restricted to certain foods? Are there any restrictions as to what you can make here? Think he supposes not. However, think he has had the best luck with the many recipes left by Helga Hufflepuff. Her quince pie has always been a favourite, but the new fangled Arbro Smokies are becoming popular as well. You don't mind students in here? Is it all right for students to wander into the kitchens? 
Well, since you asked, students aren't supposed to be in the kitchens, but Finky doesn't mind. There's nothing that lifts Finky's spirits more than the company of students. We so rarely get visitors, and we have plenty of treats. Come back any time you please. It was nice to meet you. Thank you for the beef. Happy to help, and to meet you as well. Please give Nick Finky's regards. Right. So now I've got the roast beef. There's nothing like a meal prepared by a house elf. And then... Ah, you're back! No trouble, I take it? Not at all. Finky sends her regards, along with the rotten roast beef. Ah, glad to hear it. Kind elf, Finky. Now, let's get that beef to Sir Patrick Delaney Podmore, and you'll be one step closer to finding those pages. This is all rather cryptic, Sir Nicholas. What's going on? Terribly sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sir Patrick organizes the Headless Hunt, a group of headless ghosts who gather for various, uh, headless activities. Headless activities? Uh, yes, uh, you'll see. Anyway, I don't know how, but a member of that hunt, Richard Jackdaw, had the pages when he was alive. My plan is to take the rotten roast beef to Sir Patrick so that he'll allow me, uh, us, to engage with the hunt and speak to Jackdaw. Uh, shall we? Is this dangerous? Is the headless hunt dangerous? Oh, the headless hunt wouldn't hurt a fly, let alone a student. Just a group of fun-loving, headless ghosts. What will I do when we get there? What am I supposed to do when we meet the hunt? Allow me to do the talking. They can be a rather supercilious lot. I'm certain they'll be welcoming to you, however. In no small part due to the rotten roast beef you will come bearing. Uh, the roast beef was not for I thought the rotten roast beef was for you. It is, uh, in a way. You see, I've been trying to gain access to the hunt for quite some time. Offering the beef to Patrick may help me in that regard. While, of course, also helping you. Very well, sounds good. Very well. I'd like to meet Sir Patrick myself and see this headless hunt. Ah, wonderful. You won't regret it. So, let's get to headless hunt then. Do stay behind me. It's Sir Patrick we want. Oi, Nesta, look who's here. What have we told you, nearly headless Nick? Hello, Sir Amzad. Do let us pass. We've brought a little something for Sir Patrick. Probably come to try to beg his way in again. <laughs> <laughs> Do they always talk to you like that? Oh, all in good fun. Once Sir Patrick lets me join the headless hunt, I'll be right there with them. This offering is sure to win him over. Uh, don't forget why I'm here, sir. Rest assured, you'll have your information from young Jackdaw in no time. Wherever he may be. What I'd give for a flagon of mead or a nice leg of lamb right about now. Then this party would be complete. How about the next best thing, Sir Patrick? Ah, Sir Nicholas. And a student. Who let you in? Uh, we brought you a gift. This is all very suspicious. What do you really want? As if I need to ask. Um, it, it's Richard Jackdaw. Uh, where can we find him? Uh, may we speak to him? Jackdaw, eh? Why, here he is now. What a shame. Without his head. I bet you've always wondered what that's like, eh, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you jazz. <sighs> it's bound to be around here somewhere. Probably being used in a game. If you find it, I give you my permission to speak with him, my young model. <laughs> it's the least I can do for you for 
bringing this putrescent gift home. Uh, sir, there's another matter I wish to discuss with you, if I may. Tut, tut, Sir Nicholas. How many times do I have to tell you? Our entry requirements are quite clear. <laughs> but, sir, uh, I... We aren't the headless except for a little bit of tendon hunt, after all. Now, please, follow me and I shall help you find your way out. Farewell, my young friend. Perhaps your luck with these chaps will be better than mine. So I guess that was the head that was playing with to start off with then. So what's this? Map with... Ironically, with never been as level-headed as I am now. Oh. Bridge. Trees, bridge and candle. Hmm, a map. It doesn't appear to be connected to the missing pages. Best hang on to it for now. A fine Find night the headless the point game. So let's go find this game then. Be next to play our little game of hide and seek amongst the pumpkins. Hello again. Can you help me? Ah, Sir Nicholas's young friend. Has he abandoned you? Not at all. I need to speak to Richard Jackdaw. Sir Patrick said his head might be around here somewhere. Indeed, it might be. Hmm. It is a bit unorthodox to include a mortal, but if you do wish to speak with him, oh, why not? You can speak with Jackdaw if you can find his head amongst these pumpkins. Not just once, but five times. Good old Dumfrey will move the head to a different spot each time you find it. Those are the rules. What say you? Uh, yeah, I'm game. If that's Sorry, what I need to do to speak to Jackdaw, I'll do it. Marvellous! Of course, a mortal holding a wand has an advantage over us ghosts. You can simply blast away to your heart's content. Remember, the game's not over until you find him five times. Begin! Cast away! Who would have thought a mortal would be so good at this? Incendio! Whatever you say, Dumfrey, this is not my finest moment. Is it a I've never seen it played like this. So, How delightful. I could do that too if I had a wand. And a body. Well, good job, I suppose. But we're not through with you. Oh, what fun! A student is playing! Here we go again. I've never seen it played like this. How delightful. That ghost said I should blast away to my heart's content. Well done! Of course, having a wand served you well. Still, I believe congratulations are in order. Not too bad for a mortal. Now, say what you need to say to old Jack Dorier, here, hmm? You've earned it. Nicely done. But what's going on? You're not a member of the Headless Hunt. No, I'm not. Sir Nicholas said you might know the location of some pages I'm looking for. Merlin's beard. I know precisely the ones you mean. I pinched them from Peeves. How could I forget? The map on those pages led me to my demise. I was not ready for what awaited me in that cave. The pages are likely still mouldering away with my, uh, uh, remains. Quite a final adventure, I must confess. The pages are why you lost your head. And I must visit a cave and search for your corpse. Yes. <sighs> 
You'd think a decapitated ghost would get used to the word corpse. Say, here's an idea. Why don't you meet me at the edge of the Forbidden Forest, and I'll show you where to go. How is it possible to steal from Peeves, a poltergeist? I didn't steal the pages from his ghostly form. I merely found them in his wake of destruction. He has a penchant for wrecking things. Books, bottles, suits of armor. Whatever's likely to cause the most chaos. I found them after he ran riot through the library. Doubt he even noticed they were gone. Who cut off your head? Did someone in the cave cut off your head? I was having a look around when I suddenly sensed a refreshing breeze, after which I felt, well, light-headed. That's all I remember. Hence, when you visit, be prepared. I can't tell you what for, specifically, but you seem a perceptive sort. Beware a light breeze. Um, what's in the cave? What will I find in the cave? Aside from my mortal remains, if I remember correctly, some treasures, a magical bridge, but what kind of an adventure would it be if I spoiled the surprises for you? Very well. I need those pages, so I suppose I'd better meet you. Thank you. Not to worry. I'll just need to be reunited with my body first. But Dumfrey can handle that. See you at the forest's edge. So, that's complete main quest for our six. And that's why this episode is going to finish guys, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. And if you have, please hit that thumbs up, give me Chuck a subscribe, become part of the Trucking family, let's get to them 200 subscribers. Hit a bell, hit that, hit a bell, hit that bell notification, so you never miss an upload. And leave a comment down below about what you thought, and I shall see you in the next one guys, so thank you so much. Hope you like all the fans, goodbye for now, thanks and goodbye.